September, my favorite month of the year, and it's haul time. What could possibly be better? Hey everybody, welcome back to A Week in Geekdom. Geo here, and yeah, we've reached the end of the month. As tradition dictates on this channel, we must do a haul video. If you want me to review a specific product, let me know in the comment section down below. So let's get started with manga, because yeah, anime manga haul time, right? Uh, I picked these volumes up. This is Brave Tuber. Here we have volume one right there. And volume two i picked this up from book outlet i normally don't buy from them but i couldn't pass up the sweet deal for i think it was four dollars and some cents each i got uh, the first two volumes i don't know i i didn't do my research so i do apologize i don't think this is all of it i think there's more coming but or this might be it i have regardless i'm pretty interested in checking this series out uh, obviously as you can see it's a really cool parody on uh, the whole YouTube and social media stuff. You follow these two characters, these adventurers in a different uh, alternate world, uh, more fantasy based with dragons and monsters and all that stuff. And they have technology enough to do vlogging and computers and all that stuff. So they want to be uh, brave tubers and be like uh, the, the, the best at it with the best views and all that stuff and super famous. I don't know, I it appealed to me. Plus the fact that I do uh, YouTube videos, it sort of uh, rang a little bit close to home and I kind of wanted to check it out. I love the uh, play on the whole YouTube comment section right there. And I can show you a little bit of the artwork. Nothing too fancy, but still, I like the character designs and the monsters and the world and everything. Plus the fact that you're mixing two things that shouldn't go together. So we'll see if the comedy holds up. Uh, here we have volume two. Let me show you the back right here. There's that. I love me some good comedy and manga, so we'll see how this fares up. So Brave Tuber, one and two. Uh, continuing my Shonen Jump hype train, I got Demon Slayer Volume 16. This was fantastic. I love it. I love how things just escalated. I know the series already ended. I don't know. I haven't read the finale yet. But uh, reading that volume, I love how everything just, uh, just went bonkers in the matter of minutes. As you're reading the uh, uh, volume, things just keep escalating to the full-out battle that's happening. That was awesome. Another one of my favorites here is Dr. Stone, Volume 13. This has been a delight. I still love this so much. And I love... Uh, let me show you this cover right here. This is easily one of my favorite covers. Very reminiscent of the uh, One Piece image with uh, in the at the end of the Alabasta arc, I should say. Really awesome. Now this is a little bit not safe for work, so I'm not going to show you the interiors. I'm just going to show you the cover. I don't want to get in trouble with anybody. Uh, this is Interspecies Reviewers Volume 4, so we finally do get another volume of this. I can't even show you the back cover because it's a little bit too uh, uh, risque. But let me see if I can find something. All right, this is this is kind of safe. Here's some of the artwork right there. You can watch my video on Volume 1 on this channel, which was mostly spoiler-free, but you can sort of get an idea of what this uh, book is all about. A little underrated in my opinion. Everybody goes on and on because of the subject matter, but I think it's fine. You know, it's just a little uh, not safe for word comedy. <laughs> and uh, next up we've got Beastars Volume 8. This is one of my favorite covers from the series. And this, this is just firing on all cylinders, man. I love this series so much. And it's a shame that it's ending. It's I'm happy for it because we can collect the whole thing. I think it's going to be 22 or 23 volumes total. But I just wish it would continue just a little bit more. Regardless, this is amazing stuff. And I did a video on this book on my channel a few months ago. Uh, it was sent over to, uh, for reviewing purposes, uh, from Seven Seas Entertainment. It is Blank Canvas, My So-Called Artist Journey. I did a video on the first three volumes. Uh, I thought, alright, I'll get the series, 
I'll read it digitally on my tablet or whatever, but I ended up really wanting it and it was for sale. At least I got this one, volume two and volume three. I got them for close to five dollars each, which is insane. And I, I got them from Book Outlet. So yeah, Rave Tuber and this were part of the Book Outlet uh purchase that I made. So I got volume two already. Volume three did not arrive for this video and I went ahead and ordered the rest. So you'll see it eventually. Uh, if you don't know, this is basically an, uh, uh, what do they call this? An autobiographical manga take on uh, Akiko Higashimura, who of course is a fam famous uh, female mangaka. She did uh, stuff like uh, Princess Jellyfish and it's her life story drawn you know, she, she's doing her own take on her story and the ups and downs and all the stuff she goes through uh, with her sensei and all that stuff. Just a really fantastic, wonderful story that I think everybody will enjoy if you check it out. Go, go watch my video. I, I went a little in-depth with the first three volumes on that. I, I need to read everything again to make a proper series review and cover the remaining two volumes. Uh, finally, uh, the last manga on this uh, haul is, of course, Junji Ito's Venus in the Blind Spot. It took me a while, but I finally got it, and eventually I'll do a video on this, because I do reviews on almost all the uh, Junji Ito stuff that is available, uh, localized. So yeah, this is no exception, a collection of horror stories. Uh, short stories, I should say, and there is some double dipping, which is, eh, it is what it is. I don't mind that much, but it's fun because it has some really cool colored pages and all that fun stuff. So that is the manga haul. Let's go into anime. I am missing two shows, and that would be Fire Force and Dr. Stone that came out on Blu-ray, but uh, they literally shipped a day before filming this, so I can't possibly show you guys but you'll see it eventually on the uh, October haul. Here we have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind Part 1. Uh, I love this. It looks fantastic. However, it sucks that this does not match with the previous released sets. Those were big cases, black cases, with selective coloring and all that stuff. Some were like chromium, others were uh, purple, bluish, yellowish tones, and this just breaks the mold. And that's fine, I guess, but this set is thinner, it's the same price, you don't get nearly enough content, because you only get the Blu-ray here with the uh, half the series, and the booklet is uh, more like a pamphlet, really, so they skim down on all of this. You no longer get the storyboard animations, which I really loved. You no longer get the lenticulars, although they kind of stopped that a while ago, but still. I think it's kind of crappy for a company to uh, take all that stuff out, make it smaller, make it not match. It's only like a few centimeters uh, smaller than the previous sets and still charge the same amount. At least give me a sizable or small discount, you know, maybe uh, two or three bucks and I would have been okay with it. But still, I, I don't know, it sort of left a bad taste in my mouth. Anyways, here is uh, Jojo's Part 5 Golden Wind. So I'm really excited to finally watch this. I've been patiently waiting for this too, so I can binge uh, Part 5. Uh, next up, we've got uh, one of the best anime films, in my honest opinion. From an artistic point of view, it is one of the best. This is uh, Weathering With You. I wanted to grab the Steelbook, but then I thought, I don't really need the Steelbook. And then they announced the 4K Collector's Edition. It's a little bit too pricey for what you're getting, because uh, you're getting the 4K Edition, which is great. But I didn't really care for all the other extra stuff. I just wanted the movie on 4K, and the price tag was... 80 something dollars. I think that's a little bit too much for what it is where uh, I don't know if you guys know but it was recently solicited uh, Funimation is coming out with the Akira 4k box set which has nearly the same materials and that's uh, much lower in price um, I don't I don't know. I think it's a little bit too much. So I'm comfortable with just owning this and I got this for I want to say $14, which beats uh, the $80 mark, in my opinion. 
Uh, I don't know. Uh, could have. It would have been fun to uh, own the 4K edition, but with the money I'm saving, I could put it towards good use, getting other manga and other shows and all that stuff. That's at least that's my way of thinking. And finally, the last Blu-ray on this haul is something that I've been wanting for ages, ever since the original release. This is Sakura Quest, the complete series, but the Essentials Edition. I've always wanted this because I think like three years ago, I think it was three years ago when I first watched the series, I'd love the characters and the kooky premise. I'm all about uh, weird, odd plots and what characters do in those circumstances. And the fact that the character gets sent to a uh, faraway town and, you know, all the crazy people that are living in this town and, and how she's supposed to uh, highlight tourism and all that stuff. Uh, Regardless, one of the strong points about the series, uh, this is going to be very niche, one of the plot points is that the mascots, uh, when she gets there, is an actual chupacabra. Legendary cryptids. I love me cryptozoology. I, I, I love reading about that stuff. I love all those creatures. It's super fascinating to me. And to have uh, my own cryptid, because <laughs> the chupacabra obviously debuted in Puerto Rico, so to it be featured on an anime, one of my favorite mediums, uh, artistic mediums, I, I just had to have it <laughs> for that reason alone. I wasn't going to get the full series because I didn't care that much for it, but then they came out with the complete series and I sort of forgot about it. Now they released this for much cheaper. It is the Essentials Edition, basically the greatest hits line from Funimation. So I finally have it, and that is really cool. Moving on from anime and manga, I do collect uh, comics. My channel focuses on all three. I do have a couple comics here. I am I opted out from getting the Absolute Swamp Thing run from uh, DC and Vertigo. And instead, I'm just getting the series, the Alan Moore series and trade paperback. So I got volume three here with me. Uh, from the book outlet purchase, I got Godzilla Complete Rulers of Earth Volume 2. I don't have volume one yet, so I had to order it recently. Uh, basically, this volume is out of print and not necessarily pricey, but rare online. And if you find a copy, people... This was cover price uh, $30. People are charging maybe twice the amount. And I don't do that for comics at all or graphic novels. So I said, you know what? If I can find volume two at a good price, I'll get everything. I'll get the whole series, which is just two trades, but still. I was wandering through Book Outlet because I remembered, oh, they sell uh, books for cheap, you know, that they're <laughs> getting at a discount. And I typed in Godzilla and this showed up. I'm like, oh yes, and I ordered it right away. So now that I have volume two, I went ahead and picked up volume one, so you'll see it eventually. Plus, this is a really chunky book. Um, fantastic art. I mean, I love Godzilla, I love kaiju movies and all that stuff, so to have a comic with all these characters is really, really awesome in my opinion. Look at that, I love it. So I got this for $10, which is a steal, in my opinion. And speaking of Godzilla, I have to give a massive shout out to uh, Omnidog himself, Jess Bragg, for hooking me up and uh, helping me get this book, because uh, this was out of print for a long time, and it came back into print, and it happened to coincide with a week that I couldn't get it, and I was worried that I was going to miss out. So. Jess was kind enough to pick this up for me and I paid for it and he shipped it out. So thank you so much uh, for helping me acquire this. This is the reprint of Godzilla the Half Century War from James Stoko uh, over at IDW. I've had this series on my tablet digitally through uh, Comixology and all that stuff, but I wanted a physical copy, so now I do. This thing is beautiful and some of the best artwork when it comes to Godzilla comics in my honest opinion. If you love kaiju movies, if you love Godzilla and all these characters, this I think this is a must own for your library. Uh, just a really cool read. So yeah, Godzilla, Half Century War. And finally, uh, of course, my favorite DC superhero is Aquaman, so I had to do it. This came out a while ago, but I totally slept on it, and I was okay 
uh, taking my time because I know that not everybody's going to jump on board to grab late 70s, early 80s Aquaman material. So I got it. This is Aquaman Deadly Waters uh, oversized hardcover and this is the finale when it comes to the uh, Silver Age stuff and it goes into uh, Bronze Age which was somewhat collected. We're still missing a lot of volumes when it comes to Aquaman, but I'll take what I can get, right? Also, uh, if you follow graphic novels, you know that they released The Search for Mira, Death of a Prince, and this, and somebody pointed out to me recently on the Omnibus Collectors Network, <laughs> this, all these three books could have been bound together into an omnibus. Make it uh, the, uh, I would have named it the Deadly Waters Omnibus, or something like that, and feature all three oversized hardcovers, but no, we got three separate releases, because why the heck not? Regardless, I'm still super excited about this. Uh, always great to have hardcovers for my favorite DC character, since he doesn't really get a whole lot of love on the collected editions department. So we're finishing off the haul here with a couple video games, because I, I love me some video games. And this is uh, something that I've been eyeing for a while, and it was on sale uh, at the lowest price point yet, about, I think it was $30 from a retail price of $79.99. It is the Sega Genesis Mini. I grew up with Sega, more so than Super Nintendo at the uh, early 90s. So this is hitting the nostalgia geek spot real hard. And I have some really cool plans for it that I can't talk about in this video, but you probably know what I'm referring to. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to toying with this. This is awesome. 42 games, which uh, they're all pretty, pretty uh, decent. Uh, a really nice library of uh, essentials when it comes to Genesis, unlike the PlayStation Classic uh, Mini. Uh, the Nintendo ones, they did good. Uh, I, I do want to get the Turbo Graphics one, it just, I don't want to spend a hundred bucks on it, <laughs> but I, I would like to own that at some point. So yeah, I'm really excited about this, plus the fact that the box is bigger than the actual Mini console. It's the size of the palm of my hand. I got that, and for the Switch, I got two games here. I actually did get more Switch games, uh, they just didn't arrive in time. Uh, as a birthday gift, I did acquire uh, three or four games that I will talk about later. I don't, I don't want to ruin the surprise for anybody. But I got the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Uh, if you watched my recent, the previous haul video, I showed you the Street Fighter books that I've been collecting. I have four out of the eight or nine of them, I can't remember right now. So I've been uh, in a really cool mood to play Street Fighter, and I got this, which goes up to the many versions of <laughs> Street Fighter 3, because it's a lot of versions of Street Fighter. 30 years worth in one cartridge. And this is pretty funny, uh, not really the first one, but it's the first to get here. This is Shantae Half Genie Hero, which is interesting because this was out of print. This was from Limited Run Games, and I missed my shot at it, and it was going for absurd prices online until recently. I don't know what happened, but it looks like they discovered maybe a crate full of games, and several stores were uh, selling them again for maybe twice the amount, for like um, 65 to $70 out of 35 or something like that. And I saw it, and I debated this since the beginning of August. Should I get it? Shouldn't I? It's a little bit too much, but then again, it's out of print, it's not coming back, it's a little bit run game. I said, you know what, screw it, uh, and I got it. I, I treated myself for the month of, uh, month of September as a birthday present, and just so happens that Limited Run announced that they were doing the original Game Boy game and the original, the sequel for the DSi, where, or the Nintendo DS game, those two were going to be ported over to the Switch along with Steelbooks and a slipcover, all that stuff. So I grabbed those and surprise, due to popular demand, we're going to print this all over again and sell it. Like, great, I, I, I could have waited for that announcement and would have ordered this for $35. But it is what it is. Uh, how was I supposed to know? So now I, I have one and two. I have this one, which is the fourth game. Back in May, I believe, or June, I pre-ordered the fifth game 
from Limited Run, so all I'm missing is the priciest one, uh, Pirate's Curse, which I do have on the 3DS, but I'm praying that it does get a re-release eventually, because they saw the sales number for these series, and they know if they put it out again, it's going to sell. So it's just a matter of time. I'm patient. I'll wait until we get uh, Pirate's Curse on uh, the Switch again. So yeah <laughs> that is the haul ladies and gentlemen thank you so much that's a lot of stuff really excited there's some stuff missing obviously which is going to be great for next month when you do see it uh some really cool stuff but as a treat for all of you i am going to give uh this code away for sakura quest here is the actual code for you guys if you get this digital code please let me know i don't mind that you're swooping swooping in and grabbing it i, I really don't mind because i've done it it's okay i just want to know who got it so i can congratulate them and thank them for watching the video that's it so if you do get the code uh thank you so much uh for watching the whole thing here is the code for sakura quest let's see if i can there we go you can pause that at any point and get the code for Sakura Quest, a complete series. So I hope you enjoy that and have fun with the series. It's a nice comedy, uh, really cool stuff. So yeah, that's a little token of appreciation it's, uh, for you guys. So thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. And if you're new here, I do contents like this where I talk about anime, comics, manga on a weekly basis. So subscribe if you can, it'll help out a ton. And I'm hopeful that this channel can grow further and further, right? So thank you so much. Uh, I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode.